Danny Muno will lead it off. He's had a really good College World Series hitting 391 above his season average of 332. And starts off with a ball out of the strike zone from Nathan Moreau. I don't care how good you are, how many big games you have played in, this is the last game of the season for a national championship. The butterflies are flying in formation. Fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes to Danny Muno, the shortstop from Thousand Oaks, California. Another freshman shortstop. I've seen a pack of those out here. Very unusual. Yeah. Schlander for Stanford was outstanding, but he hit in the nine hole. Danny Muno has an awful lot of responsibility, not only being a shortstop as a freshman, but also hitting in that leadoff hole. He sets the tone for this lineup, and it is an unbelievable tone. They play with a blind ambition. They are tough as nails. Two and two to the opening hitter. Fouled out of play. Now we cannot overstate what a Cinderella story this is about these Bulldogs from Fresno State. Absolutely amazing what they have done to get here in this final game. If they'd have just gotten to the College World Series, that was an accomplishment alone. Absolutely. This ball also foul. And Mike Batesel, the follow up on your point, the head coach, said the first thing he heard when he walked in the stadium before his first game was don't worry about these guys will be on a plane by Wednesday. Well you missed it by a week and a day. They'll be on a <laughs> plane tomorrow. It's a great thing about baseball. If you get here you have a chance to win. Two hopper to second base star getting the call at second base today throws him out. Probably the easiest way to put it is to relate it to basketball because people are so familiar with the seedings for the Sweet 16 and the 64 teams that get in. These guys are the equivalent to a 13, 14, 15, 16 seed. In fact, they were the regional four seed. There is no five seed. Four <laughs> is dead last. That's almost like saying it will give you a number. It doesn't matter. You're fourth in your region. You're not going anywhere. We'll see you next year if you have a better year. Exactly. And they did not even come close to winning the WAC. They had to win the WAC tournament, which is the only way to get the bid. They were four games above 500 starting the WAC tournament. They weren't even on the bubble. There was no bubble to be seen. It was either win the WAC tournament or it's over. And here they are, one game away. It's remarkable. For the 286 teams in Division I baseball, they were 102nd in office offense and 60th in pitching. It's not very good, is it? No. <laughs> Here, they were leading in pitching at the College World Series. They're leading in home runs and slugging. And they have had to patch together pitching for two days. That one is ripped past Peisel for a base hit. Gavin Hedstrom with a one-ounce single. Well, Hedstrom has kind of a buggy whip swing got a lot of action a lot of hand action there but he's a good pull hitter he rolls over a lot of pitches but he hits him hard good low ball Pizel gets a good jump on that ball but just doesn't get down fast enough Hedstrom at first. One out for Wetzel. Wetzel only hitting 407 in the College World Series. They have just hammered the ball out here the last few opportunities. The one thing we didn't deal with yesterday in the 19 to 10 game that might have made a little more high scoring was the shadows here at Rosenblatt with the sun out tonight. We have the shadows to deal with and it usually makes it a more defensive game for three or four innings. It's a lot tougher on the hitters to see the ball. 
Hit to straightaway right into that tough Sunfield, and Olsen was there to make the catch. Two gone. And Steve Susdor, the senior star from Newhall, California, the WAC player of the year, the career RBI leader. Not very highly drafted, 16th round by the Phillies. But boy, does this kid have a beautiful swing. His swing will remind you a little bit of Will Clark. Kind of a natural uppercut with a back shoulder and front hip. Hitting 343 on the season. Last night in the second game, Sussdorf had a two-run shot to right. That was in the fifth. Made it 15 to 6. His second home run of the College World Series in the 39th of his career at Fresno State. He has driven in 88 runs this year. And when he swings, you'll see that back shoulder drop a little bit, that front hip rise up, and he's got a natural little uppercut. You want to pitch him up and in, but when you do, he takes that pitch. He's very good at understanding where he has holes and laying off of that pitch. Runner goes, here's the throw on the bag, and he is out. Justin Wilson will be the pitcher, a lefty, a junior 6'3 from Clovis, California. Eight and five on the year with a 4.34 ERA. Another young man that will pitch inside, a left-hander that pitch inside, that'll make you effective with these aluminum bats. His best pitch, though, is his slider. And this is the first rested and feeling good Fresno State pitcher they've had on the mound for the three games that they have faced Georgia. They have patched together some pitching and have been pitching on fumes. Now they have a legitimate starter on the mound. I think that's one of the most remarkable parts about this overall remarkable story is that the pitching staff has been held together by spit and bailing wire until tonight. And Ryan Pizel will lead it off. He's out of Marietta, Georgia, 12th round pick of the Rockies in this year's draft. And Pizel hitting 344 overall. But 458 in Omaha, two home runs and seven RBIs. Been great at the top of the order. You know, to follow up on that pitching story for Fresno State, they lost their number one, who ended up going in the second round to Pittsburgh. He would have been a number one draft pick. He had a fractured shoulder. Tanner Shepers. I'm sure he's here in the stands to watch, but he's not allowed on the bench. Swing at a high fastball and a miss. And Allison was their number two starter. He wasn't available. He hadn't pitched for two weeks until the other day when he finally got a start. They didn't know how long he could go. He had shoulder tendonitis, had not picked up a ball or thrown a breaking ball for two or three weeks. Finally played some catch and begged Mike Batesel to let him try, and he got him through an elimination game. Strike three called on the inside corner. Nice pitch from Justin Wilson. How about the defense for this ball club? Well, Steve Detweiler out there in right field. We have to highlight the effort that this young man has made. He has a torn cartilage in his thumb on his glove hand. And watch where his glove goes on this catch. Right into the wall. Mike Batesel says, watch three innings, and this guy will run into something and get dirty within three innings of every game. His nickname is Rottweiler. <laughs> And they keep hitting balls out there that he can chase. It's amazing to watch him hit with that thumb because he he swings and misses and it absolutely kills him. And he has to stay out of the box until the pain kind of subsides. This is a thumb that is torn so bad he's going to need surgery. They told him he was going to need surgery when he did it. And he said, I still want to play. And the doctor said, you're not going to hurt it any worse. It might make it a more complicated surgery, but you can play. Well, they're going to have to take a ligament out of his forearm and transplant it. It's a Chami John for the, the thumb. Ouch. Ball and two strikes. Olsen lefty against lefty. Hits it hard, but right at Wetzel. And the second baseman, Eric Wetzel, throws him out. Two gone quickly. And they'll see Gordon Beckham with the bases empty, which is the ideal way to have him come up after this ground out. Matt Olson does a good job hitting the ball hard through those shadows, lefty on lefty, and Wetzel stays with it. 
also a little tough on the fielders, especially over there on the right side. You have the sun coming at you and the shadows. Beckham, a top 10 pick in the draft. This kid has major league skills and is one of those five tool players you don't run into very often. And look what he's doing at the College World Series, hitting over 500 just by hitting line drive, just like that. If he can't drive the pitch, he whacks it for a single. He has been so consistent and is now 11 for 20, hitting 550 out here. Well, he keeps his hands back. He's a little fooled on the changeup, but hits it out front, rolls over it a little bit. You see that little extension that he keeps the bat on plane to hit that line drive. He is only one off the national home run lead held by Matt Clark of LSU. And if they get ahead and have a comfortable lead, you can bet he's going to go up there hacking, trying to get that record, but not until. If it's not necessary for his ball club, he's not going to try to go up there and hit a bomb for his own purposes. And now Poitras, who has been almost as good with a bat in his hand as Beckham has out here, he's hitting 444 in the series. Now if you're thinking stolen base over there at first, Gordon Beckham also has had 17 of 21 stolen bags. And with two outs, it's not a bad idea because Rich Poitras can lead off an inning with the best of them also. Very potent bat that could drive you in from first or second. Poitras has eight runs driven in here in Omaha. And that's in five games. Their record is four and one. So their first loss was yesterday, and they were perfect until then. When you count the regional, the Super Regional, and the College World Series, they have lost the most games you can possibly lose and still win the championship. They have faced elimination <laughs> games everywhere. They lost one in the regional, one in the Super Regional. They've lost two out here, but they're still alive. That one's low. Somebody might be saying, how do you lose two in a double elimination tournament and still stay here? Well, the first part of that is you can't lose two, and then when you get to the finals, it's best of three, and they've lost one. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. Skyed to shallow center. Hedstrom comes on, will make the catch. Poitras upset with himself that he couldn't handle that pitch. North Carolina could have put him out of the tournament. They beat them, and they have beaten Georgia here in the best two out of three finals. Now both teams facing the ultimate elimination game. Susdorf, who was at the plate when Hedstrom was thrown out trying to steal second base, turns on it, lines it off the glove of Amadi down at first. Got a lot of glove on that, but that ball was smoked. And Amadi upset that he didn't come down with it. Excuse me, Poitras. A line drive again. This one deflecting off. We had a couple last night with the infield in where we had some deflections just like this. Get up. The big fella didn't get up quite fast enough. You have to watch to see if the, he needed sunglasses on that when he went up. The bill of your cap and your eyes are then exposed. That ball can get on you in a hurry. And that's what he's looking at. Coming over the top of the grandstand and the press box, waiting on the ruling whether that's a hit or an error. And now Alan Amati with a runner aboard and nobody out here in the second inning. Amati, another one of those guys hitting over 400 here in Omaha. 409, he's up to 386 on the season and has 92 runs batted in. Buster Posey leads the nation at 93. Posey was here. He's he and his Florida State teammates were eliminated early. And Amadi with one RBI would tie for the national championship with two. He would claim that crown. That one breaks inside from Nathan Moreau and it is an error on the first baseman. Poitras allowing Susdorf to reach. Well, the guy he's chasing, Buster Posey in RBIs, was fifth overall selection by the Giants in the first round. Hit to deep left, but drifting back is Allen. 
just at the edge of the warning track where he makes the catch gets it back in and one out you know, one of the themes here at the College World Series not only we're going to crown a champion but we had seven number one draft picks here it was absolutely amazing to watch the ability we've still got two left right there we might see the closer of the year Joshua Fields throws 95 to 98 miles an hour for Georgia with an 82 mile hour hook and Gordon Beckham the shortstop we've already highlighted has had an unbelievable College World Series and more and more college players going higher and higher in the draft and it just reflects the quality of college baseball these days it used to be a rarity uh, to have anywhere near that number and now it's become more or less routine and we have seen so many guys leave Omaha and within the stretch of two years most of the ones we projected are already in the big leagues yeah, they're not just there but doing a great job right the quality of the pitching this year was down when you ask scouts and we see the two first rounders that are here for us was Carlos Gutierrez the closer for Miami and Joshua Fields the closer right there for Georgia but it really showed up here in the College World Series also we've only had five quality starts Detweiler who has been moved up in the batting order from eighth to sixth with the left hander on the mound hitting 256 on the season that thumb just kills him when he swings a bat particularly when he misses like that and that left hand you'll see him grimace and you look at that hand he's trying to get the feeling back in it really get the pain to go away there is no ligament holding that thumb on his hand right now it is torn he still doesn't get cheated does he no he doesn't He's going to be up there to get his hacks. 2 2 inside. Now let's see if they'll start Susdorf at first on a 3 2 pitch. Detweiler is a strikeout candidate, 65 this year. And with a bad thumb, probably even worse. Runner goes. Foul outside Bubble. third. You know, Detweiler's got to be one of those guys you can trust. If you're going to put on the hit and run, he's going to put the bat on the ball. If you're going to do this, if you ask him to bunt, he's going to get it down. If you ask him to steal a pace, he's going to do it. Well, you know you're going to get full effort. Yep. And with a guy with that many strikeouts in a 3 2 count, you start your runner. Mike Batesel has a lot of confidence that he's going to be able to read ball and strike, and if it's a strike, put it in play. Mendonca will be next. Ball is sky down the left field line and will go foul. Mendonca has been a hitting story out here. Done a terrific job. But he is a left hander, so they've moved him down in the order. Doesn't get the same kind of quality swings he has gotten against the right handers he's faced. Three and two to Detweiler, one out, one on in the second. Checking throw to first. For the most part, the pitching staffs on these uh, teams have done the same thing. They've paid attention to the runners, but they haven't been overly concerned and turned the game into 17 throws to first every uh, at bat. Runner goes again. Ball hit to deep right. Olsen going back to the wall. Leaps. And it's gone. Detweiler comes through again. Who needs a thumb on one hand to hit? Olsen had a shot and barely missed it. He just stays on top of it enough. A high fastball 3-2 count. He's been in swing mode. He gets one close. He lets it fly. Oh, and oh. Matt Olsen just misses it. It hits the yellow line on top of the fence and just clears. A two-run shot puts Fresno State on top. And Detweiler 
now with seven RBI and two home runs here in Omaha. What a performance. And now Mendonca, we saw him strike out last night against the left-hander. He did not have good swings at all. Well, he hangs in there well against the righty, of course, but against the lefty, has trouble keeping that front shoulder in. This one's fouled off. Mendonca has fanned 97 times this year. At the beginning of the season, he just struggled horribly about every other at bat was a strikeout. But they didn't want to change his mechanics during the season. They didn't see this coming. So they will work with him in the fall to change his mechanics a little bit. Got him out in front and struck him out there. Fresno State leading the College World Series in power. 13 home runs. Miami is second with six, and seven different guys have done it. And they have only allowed three as a pitching staff. Swing and a miss by Jake Johnson, who gets a chance to DH today. He's a 232 hitter on the season from La Mirada, California. Off speed with a called strike. Yeah, the Cinderella's can hit it, can't they? <laughs> the Georgia's battled that home run race uphill. They've only hit three, but given up 11. That one sails out of the zone to Johnson. He's been the DH most of the time against left handed starters. One home run, five driven in on the year. But one for two here in Omaha. Highly regarded recruit. Loops this one to the first baseman. Point. They started unranked. They were 8 and 12 to begin the season. Had to win their conference tournament just to get in the NCAA field. And were rewarded with a brutal regional and super regional. Long Beach is one of the toughest places to play. Long Beach State plays brilliantly at home. And they went in there and knocked off Long Beach State. Then they had to go to Arizona. Arizona was Arizona State was what 38 39 and three 39 and three. That's pretty tough. They lost to him in the first game and then beat him twice to get out of the Super Regional. Georgia down two nothing. This is Bryce Massoneri who was caught throughout the series now is the DH today. And Lewis has already proven his worth behind the plate. Throwing out a runner who tried to steal on him. Massoneri has had a tough series. Chops this one and bobbled it short by Muno. Hey. Knowing who's running, he still had a shot to get him. Massoneri, not the swiftest of guys going down that line. His wife, Lauren, hey, and their new baby here. on the left. Hey, Daddy. He's had a couple plays during this college world series where he's clanked them a little bit and able to find the ball quicker than that and get the guy out at first. This is the first one he's clanked that actually gets away from him, but he still has a shot. Bryce Massonary, normally the everyday catcher, very slow a foot. David Perno did not think three days in a row would be good behind the plate for that big fellow, so slipped him into the DH role today, and so far it's been an outstanding move. Joey Lewis throwing out the base runner. Oh, his strong. teammates been on him if he hadn't been able to beat that out with the boot. He'd have never heard the end of that one. No. Now Cerrone represents the tying run. Cerrone, who was struck out eight times out here, has turned it around, is now hitting 267 in Omaha. 304 overall. And he hits this one hard through the right side. Massadari will be content to stay at second base. And Cerrone has a ringing single to right the second of the ball game. For the Georgia Bulldogs so they rally in the bottom of the second and that's been a hallmark of both of these teams when they have been down they come right back Georgia fell behind in game one of this series they were down six three and had a huge eighth inning to come back they left the eighth inning up seven to six now Joey Lewis who got the catching assignment today hammers this one foul down the right side 
Lewis 259 and here's the attempted steal. Lewis real good arm. That's a terrific throw right on the money. To Beckham. Lewis has not sacrificed all year long and was swinging away on the first pitch. Takes that one for 0 and 2. Pretty much takes the bunt away. And he's only a 259 hitter. But a kid with some power, six home runs this year. And he's hit really well out here. 438. Got him on a breaking ball. Lewis, the first out of the inning with two aboard. And now the lefty Lyle Allen. Fastball in, but then you look at the breaking ball coming through the shadows. Tough to pick up and nice bite on that curveball. One of the most impressive things I've seen of these two pitchers, they're throwing strikes. It's a big game, a lot of nerves, and there is somebody home in both of their heads. You look at the eyes, there's no glazed over look. The pressure has not got to them. They are pitching out here. Lyle Allen, the freshman lefty against lefty, and you like that breaking ball with the shadows, don't you? I like a ball that's down. You only get to see half the ball. When, when it's up, you see the whole ball, and it's a little easier to see when it comes from the sunlight to the shadows. And then a ball that changes direction is hard in the shadows completely because it starts in the light. The hitter thinks that's where it's going to be, and then when it hits the shadows, it's not only hard to see, but it's moving. I mean, it's hard enough to hit a baseball under ideal conditions. Strike called 0 and 2 to Allen. Wilson with a nice response to having the first two guys get on. Quality pitches. Seven. Strikes out Lewis and he's ahead of Allen. Seven for eight on first pitch strike, so he is locked in. Got him to chase. Back to back strikeouts. Check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Mike, when you guys were talking about nerves of a game three situation, when we met with Georgia and their coaches and players today, it was interesting because they said we have to just forget about yesterday. As you guys mentioned, Georgia needed to win this game yesterday. Their head coach, Dave Perno, said we do not want Fresno State hanging around. You know, this is their first loss here at the College World Series. And, and of course, the fact that Fresno State came back to win the game. Before the game, I was in the dugout, and these Georgia Bulldogs were walking up and down the dugout going into the clubhouse four or five times look very very nervous they've been very quiet but ever since they started to get some hits going here in this inning they've woken up a bit well it's time to wake up Aaron that's for sure Miles Starr who platoons at second base getting a start he's out of St. Simons Island Georgia landscape architecture is his major like that You know, since Cerrone got the single off of Justin Wilson, he has thrown nine straight strikes. Mm. Now, you think he's scared? He's just personifying this bulldog mentality of Fresno State. They just keep coming at you. Miles Starr with three hits in Omaha in seven at bats. Goes after a high fastball, knocks that one back to the screen. 0 and 2, he has put everybody in an 0 and 2 hole. Since those two uh, base runners have reached. Got a little David Wells in him, that look in right there. That tilted head lefty, kind of the rotund body. High fastballs and breaking balls out of the same plane. Thought he had that one too. A ball and two strikes. Massonari at second, Cerrone at first. Deep down the left field line, twisting foul. Got out in front, but yanked it. Star does not have a home run this year. I was going to say that would be, be like a, a neat place a to have a dent home run. Yes, it would. <laughs> what a neat thing to do. No home runs all year and hit one in the College World Series. Put that on your resume. This one's popped off the right side. That'll reach the seats. Making Justin Wilson work. Yeah. 
just got a piece of that one. We talk so much about the Fresno State attitude, but these Georgia Bulldogs have been tough also. Of their four victories, three have been come from behind victories. So this has not been a cakewalk silver spoon for the Georgia Bulldogs. They have fought through these ranks also. Those were their two first round draft picks in the dugout together. Chop toward short. Muno pulled him off the back. Two errors in the inning for the freshman shortstop. And this will send it back to the top of the order with the bases loaded. It's the first time we've maybe seen nerves get to the freshman shortstop. He has played flawlessly here at the College World Series. This ball in the hole, that tough hop, but he never really gets his momentum or his shoulders in line to throw that ball to second. Great eye hand coordination, usually can get it done, but right there the mechanics failed him. Two errors on Muno in the same inning, and the door is open for the Georgia Bulldogs. Ryan Pizel. They have already given him four outs in this inning. Pizel has a hit in every game they've played here at the College World Series. He has led them offensively at the top of this order. He has been clutch. Deep right center field. Headstrom back on the track makes the catch. Pizel bids for a grand slam and ends up 10 feet short. A lot of encouragement after two errors in inning for a freshman shortstop. I think everybody wanted a piece of him, including Mike Basil. He was pushing teammates away at the end. It's kind of like, I'm okay. I don't want to sit around also and convince you guys I'm okay. <laughs> Top of the third, Fresno State up 2 nothing. This one popped back to the screen. Well, they're teasing him enough to lighten him up, and he's lightening up with him. Well, that's got to help rather than just, you know, leaving a guy alone to stew in his own juices. Looks like he fell in a thorn bush or something. They're all picking the thorns out of him. Danny Grubb, who was catching today, junior 5'11 from Orange, California, hitting only 181 and has only had three at bats here in Omaha, still looking for his first hit. Then we'll go back to the top of the order. That one's high. two balls and a strike. Did you pay attention to averages? I mean, if it had been a guy you hadn't faced before, here's somebody 181. I mean, you just fired in there? Well, averages tell you a little bit about a hitter without ever seeing him. First of all, if a guy's got a bad average, first thing I think of, he's probably a bad breaking ball hitter. He probably doesn't adjust very well to different pitches. And the other thing I think about is you can probably beat him on a good fastball in. And if you can't beat him on the fastball in, then you probably can live away. So he ends up with having probably a swing that there's a huge hole somewhere. Called strike there for 3 2. Of course, there's so much videotape now. Yeah. Well, and these guys Nobody's are on TV a, mystery. a lot. Yep. You can get it on a webcam on their website, see games. High fastball. It's straight away right. Olsen comes in, fighting the sun, makes the catch. Check in with Kyle Peterson. Kyle. Thanks, Mike. You know, one of the keys to this Fresno State offense so far has been their ability to hit with two strikes. And it's not by accident. It's something that they work on every day. The first round of BP every day. You'll hear Mike Batesel harping on these guys. Two strike approach, two strike approach. And it's one of the reasons they've been so good offensively in this tournament. Game one against Rice, 14 RBIs in that game with two strikes. And guys that carried on today, that home run earlier this game on a 3 2 pitch to right field so that's the approach two strikes focus on taking the ball the other way and it's really been one of the keys to their offensive success and that really is something that has to be taught isn't it Kyle because you can't you're not going to have that approach unless it's taught to you You want to go up there and take your cuts but two strike approach you got to protect the zone make sure to try to put the thing in play and they have obviously done that out here. 
Well, there are so many places in baseball to throw away at bats and swings. You can throw away in a bat during a game and a blowout. These Fresno State Bulldogs do not that, do that. They don't bear down. They don't even throw away a pitch. And you can throw away swings in the batting cage and not work on something. Just go in there and try and play home run derby. And Mike Batesel really runs a pro program. He talks about practice days are mine. They'll hear speeches from me. But on game day, that's their day. That's their day to play. I'm not going to be changing somebody's mechanics or giving motivational speeches. They're going to go through their work, and that's their day. I think that's a great way to approach it. Of course, there are a lot of different ways to get it done for coaches as well as players. You know, Kyle talked about the two-strike RBIs against Rice. Fresno State Bulldogs were asked, when did you start believing you could do this? The second inning against Rice, the fifth pitching staff in the nation, they scored four. He had hard the second baseman, Starr, who has shown us some terrific defensive work when he's had the chance to play out here, does it again, ranges to his left, smothers it, and throws him out. Well, ranging to his left. He had to deal with the sun because it was down, but he does a great job rolling over and getting up quick. He knew he was going to get there range-wise. He started to take baby steps and really get a gauge of how he was going to catch it and how he was going to get up. It wasn't a rush-rush play, but he played it the conservative best way. And second basemen don't have to rush. They have that short throw. They have the luxury. If you can't pick it, just knock it down. It's still got a shot. Like, like we saw with Danny Muno on the other side when he made the two errors, the guy who grounded out exactly. to him right there. At shortstop, it's kind of do or die, field it cleanly, unless Bryce Massoneri's running, you've got a second shot. Two out, nobody on for Hedstrom, who had a base hit his first time up and was thrown out trying to steal second base. Well pitched ball game so far. Oral indicated these guys are throwing strikes. And particularly in George's case, they want four or five from their starter. They have their bullpen lined up and ready to go. These guys have the roles they have lived with all year long. That's the straightaway center. Cerrone back a couple of steps. Three up, three down. Got a quality pick and pick up something for next year. Matt Olson will lead it off for the Bulldogs against Justin Wilson, who has shut them down so far. Matt Olson had some kind of NCAA Athens regional. He had a regional for the ages. He hit 692. <laughs> he was 18 for 26. I was just going to say, it wasn't a couple of that bad. No, 26 of bad, 18 hits. Obviously, somebody couldn't find a way to get him out. Well, then he went to the Super Regional. He cooled off. He hit 568 there. Oh, slumping. <laughs> 314 on the year. You got to have guys who get hot when you come out here. That is your chance to win. If people just perform at their normal level, that won't do it. And Beckham on deck has not performed at a normal level, even for his brilliant skills. He has raised them. And you don't want to walk Olsen to face this guy. No outs and a man on first. Don't set the table for Gordon Beckham. Toward third. Mendonca. Just forget it. You hit it anywhere he can reach it, you're out. This guy is some third baseman. Let's check in with Aaron. Mike, we just saw a reminder for tomorrow's NBA draft. Well, how about the MLB draft this year? Gordon Beckham for Georgia, drafted eighth overall by the Chicago White Sox. And I know you and Oral thought it was so refreshing how, despite the fact in the next couple days, this kid is getting ready to sign a big-time contract with the Sox. He walked into our meeting today and just was like, let's go, let's go, let's play this game. I want everybody to be on the same page. The last thing he wants to talk about right now, besides joking around with Oral about the big leagues, is thinking about the Chicago White Sox. His mom, Sully, told me yesterday, he told that his family do not even buy any White Sox gear, anything, until this season is over with. Deep to right center field, Detweiler going back and chases it down on the warning track. Aaron, you're right. He has been such 
a delight to talk to and a guy who's putting his heart and soul into this program. First all time in home runs, second in runs, RBI 181 driven in. 59 doubles puts him fourth on the list and only one short of the national home run championship. And he's a second team academic All American also. So he does it in the classroom also. Even better. Poitras with the bases empty and two gone. And Beckham repeatedly has come up in this tournament with the bases empty or in a situation where first base was open and they were going to walk him intentionally or just not pitch to him. And still he's been successful. Poitras smokes that one to left for a base hit. Sussdorf gets it back in in a hurry and holds it to a single. Massonary will come up with two outs. He's a kid they have teased mercilessly here in Omaha about gaining weight during the season. Who did you liken him to? Well, or Mike should we avoid that? 88, Mike Sosha. I jokingly would say that Mike was the only catcher I knew that could catch a full season and gain weight. <laughs> I don't think he ever did, but that was the joke. Massoneri trying to go to the opposite field and follows it down the right field line. He has struggled out here, going three for 19 in Omaha, but on the season, 331, 11 home runs, 65 RBI. Married and with a young child, a lot of responsibility for this kid. Their little girl named Marley. I like that name. One ball, two strikes to Massonary. High fastball holds up. And he's two, not two playing today. Normally first. the catcher. Right. Three days in a row is a lot for this Georgia team. They had been so pristine with their record and with the new format, they had been getting a lot of rest. Their pitching was completely in order, almost getting stale. So this third day in a row they're not used to working this hard. 2 2 is fouled back in comparison to the Fresno State Bulldogs who have been on the road for 40 days and have been playing game after game after game and we're playing on fumes emotionally and pitching on fumes for sure. They haven't been home since May 15th. <laughs> Breaking pitch fought it off. This is a good at bat by Massonary. Kind of like when you do the Little League World Series and you hear about the, the families that have been on the road through the, the you know the districts and the right. regionals and the national you know and you get the Williamsport and they go oh my gosh and the team from Saudi Arabia has been on the <laughs> road for a month. They have to take a vacation just to play in the Little League World Series. Fouled out of play. Yeah but at least the team from Saudi Arabia can afford the gas. <laughs> the King Faisal All Stars or whatever. Two and two to Bryce Massonary. This will be the eighth pitch coming of this at bat. Pizel and Beckham, the leaders of this ball club, encouraging Massonary. They need a big hit to get back in this game. Down 2 nothing. Struck him out. Their own beds are going to look pretty good. Good thing they have uniforms. The laundry cost would be <laughs> hideous. Wetzel checked his swing. First team all whack player. Led the whack with 86 runs. He's probably the toughest out that'll grind out at bats on this Fresno State Bulldog team. Former leadoff hitter, so really you have. Three line drive hitters at the top of this order. And then you get to the mashers. And not only do you have him as a former leadoff hitter, most of the players on this Fresno State team are former shortstops. Converted to center field, converted to second base, moved over to third. A lot of great athletes. Strike called.
Two balls, two strikes. Fresno State batting in the fourth. That one's hit hard, but foul outside the third. We're finally through with the shadows between the pitcher's mound and home plate. We may get a second stage of them a little bit later when the light starts to shine through the stands. But for now, a little better read on the ball flight out of the pitcher's hand. Got him to chase a high fastball and struck him out. Kyle Peterson working the Fresno State dugout. Kyle, what do you have? Mike, you guys were talking about the road trip that Fresno State's been on for the last 40 days. Well, for Tommy Mendonca, that road trip's only going to continue after the College World Series. Yesterday, Mike Batesel got a call from Team USA and they informed him that Tommy Mendonca has made the national team for this summer. So tomorrow, when the College World Series is over, Mendonca will head from here to Cary, North Carolina, play 10 games in the States, and then he and Team USA head over to Europe for the European Championship. So Really a great ending to uh, what's been quite a year for Tommy Mendonca. Kid has really come into his own here in Omaha. Well, Kyle, they certainly have solved any problem they might have at third base because he will be there. That's amazing. He's got the four dislocated fingers on his throwing hand. He's pushing the ball around the infield. He catches everything, and he finds a way to get it to first base or yep. second base, and he's going to go play some more baseball. Yes, sir. The guy's a gamer. Might as well get Steve Detweiler on that team also, <laughs> take his torn ligament with him. Susdorf standing in at 342. Reached on an error his first time up. Takes that one a little bit high from Nathan Moreau. He's only had the one inning where he was touched up for those two runs. Pitched very well. Exactly what they expected from him. Um, hit foul. That home run was a, a bulldog's whisker away from staying in here. Olsen went back to the wall, leaped as high as he could, was just over his glove and just off the top of the wall, but just as good enough. Took something off, pulled the string, and just tipped foul by Susdorf. Late arriving crowd because it's a local six o'clock start. There were not all that many people in the stands when we began, but they continue to come in here. People going home and changing clothes after work. Stands continue to fill up and Sesdorf draws a base on balls. You can keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series information. Log on to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all. 88 NCAA championships. One thing a left hander does not want to do is walk another left hander. But Moreau did walk Susdorf. And Amadi will stand in. 92 driven in this year. This one down the right field line, and it will drop harmlessly foul. Buster Posey of FSU with 93 came into Omaha with the chance to win the national triple crown which would have been an unbelievable achievement. And now he's got a chance to uh, lose them all. Because <laughs> other guys in contention have been here. Strike call. A lot of those different statistical categories. We're going to go to the people who had the most opportunities. If Joshua Fields for Georgia or Gordon Beckham hits a home run, he can tie for the lead. Joshua Fields gets a save. He yep. could take the lead at 18. Couple RBIs by Amadi. He could take the lead. Fields looking for a save. If he gets it, they're national champions. He's perfect for the year. 18 for 18 if he gets it today. Well, he'd rather have the uh, share of the national championship trophy, the national saves plaque or whatever they give for that will be a nice addition to his trophy case but that's that's later. No, I was mistaken I think it's 19 for 19 if he gets it for today. It would be because he's tied right now for 18 saves on the year. Number one in the country. No balls two strikes to Amati struck him out. Well Moreau has been tough. Fastball down and in gets him to swing over it. Both these pitchers have shown great fastball command. 
The breaking balls have been sharp at times and they've been able to throw them for strikes. That walk to Sussdorf was the first one we've had between both pitchers. Moreau has fanned three through three and two thirds. And now Detweiler. Runner goes as the ball got away, thrown into center field. Sussdorf on the way to third, and he's in there safely. Okay, take time. That time, Lewis, I think, made a mistake on the throw. It was a little bit of a secondary lead when he saw the ball get away from Joey Lewis. He decided to continue on to second, and the throw in the center field he allows him to go to third. But he wasn't attempting to steal, but a good, large secondary lead. Then when the ball got away, he had a nice shot at second. And Lewis had no shot. It's a wild pitch and an error on the throw. So Susdorf walks, goes to second on a wild pitch, goes to third on the air on the throw. These are the kind of things that just kill you. And this conference is about pitching to Steve Detweiler or pitching to Tommy Mendonca, the lefty who has not looked good on deck against left-handers, but has had an outstanding College World Series. Remember, Detweiler hit the home run in his first at bat. High fastball away, just stayed on top of it long enough and barely clears the wall out there over Matt Olson's glove. Don't know about you, I don't fool with Deadweiler. The one thing that you do is you probably get him out with your pitches, but you're not scared to walk him at all. Because walking him or just putting him on, you leave that hole for the lefty, then a routine grounder on the right side, you might cost you a run. So make tough pitches like every pitch is an 0-2 pitch, even though the count might be 1-0 right here. Steady puts one right down the middle, and he jacks it. Detweiler to the wall. I like my strategy better. I had a roll four up there. Threw him a fastball right down the heart of the plate. Detweiler turned on it and cranked it all the way to the wall. Susdorf able to score easily. Detweiler has driven in all three runs in this game. A fastball down the middle, 1-0. and oh, and He just drives this to the gap. His first hit, the home run to the opposite field. This one, he goes to the left center gap, and is he charged up in this final game of the College World Series, looking to touch the trophy. Well, my next question was going to be, that's great. Treat every pitch like it's 0-2, but what if you make a mistake? Well, you have to know your pitchers, and does he have command, which he has really shown command yes, tonight. Yes, he has. And one thing we've noticed in the College World Series, all college baseball, free passes are not always a good thing. You can really turn them into some big innings. Well, I still like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I have I have hindsight here on my side. Now Mendonca. This is Weaver in the Georgia bullpen and they had their pitching plans set Weaver scheduled to be the second man. Mendonca not getting good hacks against the left hander. A completely different approach against the lefty compared to the righty looks like he's feeling for the ball and almost guessing when it's a left hander when it's a righty. He looked locked in and on top of everything. If Moreau does not get Mendonca, you get the feeling this might be his last hitter. But they want to keep him in there lefty against lefty, certainly. Three nothing. Fresno State with the lead. We're in the top of the fourth. A base hit would make it 4 nothing. Mendonca takes it outside. One ball, two strikes. 
Mendoza struck out his first time up. Detweiler down at second has doubled and homered, driven in all three with one thumb. Struck him out. Bottom of the fourth, the Bulldogs will send up Matt Cerrone, Joey Lewis, and Lyle Allen against Justin Wilson, who has been terrific. Left-handers can make such a huge difference, especially at this level. You don't see many lefties, and they continue to have an advantage at the big league level. You get a lefty that's got a breaking ball and throw strikes at the Division I level, you've got a weapon. And that's what the Fresno State Bulldogs have here with Justin Wilson. He's throwing the ball very well. I mean, you don't see many guys in the big leagues who are right-handers with an 85-mile-an-hour fastball and a sweeping curve as their repertoire. No. But you do if you're a left-hander. And they can pitch for 15 years. They can start and they can relieve and be a specialist. Fastball on the corner. Wilson showed you everything he's got on that. Cerrone not happy with the call. Wolfing about it on the way back to the dugout, continuing to stare back in at the plate, but he's gone. Fastball low and away. You be the umpire. It looks like it was a very nice pitch right on the black. Justin Wilson has earned that strike, even if it was borderline. He has been locked and loaded all night long. David Wiley rings him up, and I thought that was. Good looking pitch certainly too tough to take and Cerrone. Whoa. It's the kind of thing you usually can't get away with. This thing is bombed to dead center heads from back to the wall. Off the top of the wall. And Joey Lewis on his way to third. And he's in there. Lewis missed a home run by inches. What did he put a charge into that one. Well this might be the spark that gets Georgia going. Ryan Pizel has tried at the top of the order. Gordon Beckham has flied to right but right here this triple to center field with one out down three nothing. Just out of the reach of Gavin Hedstrom and Joey Lewis says let's go boys. And if Hedstrom finds the wall a second earlier he's got a chance to make a much better leap. He's got a shot at that ball. Didn't quite get back in time. Sometimes you get close enough to the wall when you go to jump, you, your shoulder gets pinned on the padding, but you have to start your jump, you know, a foot and a half away, so you have an angle to jump up. Allen with a chance to get a run home from third with one out. And you want to time your leap sometimes when you're out there in center field to be a little bit away from the wall as you go to jump, because you have a chance to lean and kind of climb the wall with your jump. You know, I know so much about this from shagging flies prior to games as a pitcher. He feels for the wall. He's right next to it. See, as he goes to jump, his shoulder gets stuck on the padding. If he's a good six, eight inches away from that wall, the hand kind of guides him. You give yourself some room to leap. One ball and two strikes. Lefty against lefty. The infield is back, and he struck him out. Allen with a defensive swing and the left handers have really had a tough time against Justin Wilson. Well fifth strikeout tonight and here in a very key situation not allowing Georgia to get that run with trading and out. He has been lights out three and a third four hits five K's and look at the zero under the BB no walks. Well they told us. If we can get to the championship game, we will finally have a starting pitcher that has some rest. He usually goes on six days rest. He's had three here, but that is enough, they think, to get four or five innings. He pitched on the 15th, the 21st, and now the 25th. They were patching together relievers that had pitched the night before, hoping to get 30 pitches out of them. Some pitch one inning, some pitch two. Starter that has two days rest and finally a legitimate guy that they really like his arm statistics and his rest. This guy has been sensational strike called. 
Starr, who reached on an error his first time up in a hole one and two. And Wilson, 49 of the 69 pitches have been in the strike zone. High fastball. Two and two to Starr, who's now three for eight here in Omaha. If he can keep it going, top of the order in Pizel would be next. Strike called. Took called strike three and Wilson struck out the side. And Fresno State, meanwhile, has been hitting it pretty well and looking to add to their three nothing advantage. And Jake Johnson, who was the DH tonight, 0 for 1, will hit against Nathan Moreau, who works his fifth inning as the starter. Fastball high. <laughs> Change up, swing and a miss, and it's 1 1. Johnson hitting eight. He'll be followed by Grubb and Muno. Down to third. Heisel. One gone. We're in the top of the fifth. We are playing for a national championship. Delighted you could join us from beautiful Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska. Our entire crew is here. We have enjoyed this long trip to Omaha. Fresno State going after its first College World Series title, only the second national championship in school history they could claim tonight. Georgia has won it before back in 1990 when the head coach David Perno was a player. This is lined toward the gap but chased down by Cerrone who has a lot of range as a center fielder. We appreciate all the passion of a Matt Cerrone in center field. He had a 5K evening the other night where he struck out five times but he didn't take it onto the field. He will play all out. He'll be out there diving like Jim Edmonds. Two outs, nobody on, top of the order. Justin Wilson has been sensational getting a little breather here as his team bats in the fifth pitch through the two errors of Danny Muno is at the plate. Yep. Not only the seven K's and no walks but pitch through two errors from his shortstop. That's the inning where he had to get five outs didn't still didn't allow a run. Ball and two strikes to Muno. Moreau has pitched pretty well in his own right. It is a very warm early evening. There are the numbers on Moreau. He is already up to 88 pitches. This was about as far as they expected him to go. This one's popped up into that sun field. Olsen coming on, fighting the sky, and makes the catch. Top of the order, you'll see Pizel, Olsen, and Beckham. If anybody gets on, it's Poitras. You want to start making some noise if you're the Georgia Bulldogs. This one is popped up. Grub, the catcher, back toward the screen, runs out of room. You know, the key to this outing for Justin Wilson is not only is he getting the strikeouts, he has no walks, and he's getting ahead in the count. So you watch these guys with Georgia try and climb back into this game. 
he is not going to set the table for them. They're going to have to hit their way on. And can Georgia get some people on base in front of Gordon Beckham? They have not been able to do it consistently. And this All-American with a 400 plus average and raw power has been coming up for the most part with the bases empty or a situation where they don't have to pitch to him. Down to third. Forget it. Mendonca is there. He has been perfect at third base. And there's one gone. Here's Aaron Andrews. Mike, as you and Oral know, one of the cool things about the College World Series is just the fact that the Major League Baseball players, day in and day out, they're watching these games in the clubhouses before their games. And you know that the Atlanta Braves are keeping their eye on the Georgia Bulldogs. They're not too far from Athens, Georgia, and a particular Atlanta Brave hitting coach and former Brave Terry Pendleton. He's got his eye on this matchup. Of course, he's lived in Atlanta forever. His 17-year-old daughter is about to go to Georgia, so he's pulling for the Braves. But Terry Pendleton also played for Fresno State, 81-82, won a conference championship with them. He called me today, left me a message to just talk baseball and say, how cool is this? Do you know what this means to my school right now? He says he's been texting back and forth with his former teammates from Fresno State saying, don't jinx me, don't jinx me, don't text me right now. Let's not worry about this. But he was just expressing how huge this is for the university and their community. Those connections never end, Aaron, as Justin Wilson lost his balance coming off the rubber and is shaking his pitching hand right now. But back to your point about Terry Pendleton. Ties don't go away. I mean you just live for those moments and relive your experiences from when you played in college and had a chance to get close to people. Uh, teammates outside of your family are going to be one of the most important things you'll ever have. Another graduate alumni that was a big leaguer Dan Gladden who I played against was a San Francisco Giant. He was a hard nosed player just like these current Fresno State Bulldogs. Wilson says I'm OK. Here's what happened to him. It's the edge of his shoe I think on the hole. It just kind of takes him down. Sometimes you miss that hole out in front of the mound with your landing leg. Kind of buckles your knee. Oh and two. He's just been lights out against left hand. That next pitch after the fall down is always the mystery. Like I, I really want to plant this one. <laughs> I'm not going down again. No balls and two strikes to Olson. Who was grounded out twice. Beckham is on deck. The lefties have been one for six. Off of Justin Wilson. So he's given these lefties a problem. That one's outside. If they can lay off that pitch they'll do a little bit better make him throw that fastball in the strike zone most of the breaking balls to left handers have been chase breaking balls. A ball and two strikes. Struck him out with a fastball. That's number eight. Instead of the chase breaking ball it's a fastball right down the middle but you got to try and read it and the shadows have returned. His strike to ball ratio has been outstanding tonight. It's a little different than the prior games. He is on top of it. This is his third College World Series appearance. He is 1 and 0 with a 292 ERA coming in. He has lowered it in this game. And is approaching 17 innings pitched. Breaking ball on the corner to Beckham. And the All American stands in one for two. Continues to raise his average, but again, batting with huh. nobody on board. He didn't like that call, thought the pitch was inside. That's his dad. Met his mom and Aaron Andrews spoke to her earlier in the tournament. Beckham holds up on a high fastball. Dad was a football player at South Carolina. Gordon. And a quarterback from 79 to 82. Two two to the All-American shortstop. Lays off a breaking ball. 
Well, you can see the exceptional ability he has at the plate. We've got the shadows. We've got a pitcher that is on top of his game with a late breaking ball. He's had borderline pitches. He's checked his swing twice. This is a tough guy to get out. He just knows how to hit. But the Beyond pitch recognition the is amazing. Yeah. Fastball. He's going to be really upset with this as he skies it to right into that sun. Detweiler comes on and makes the catch. We've experienced it and we've watched it in other sports, but they are personifying it here. Dean Weaver, the new pitcher, six and one on the season. Good-looking right-hander out of Douglas, Georgia, and one and zero oh here at the College World Series. So this is the kind of pitching that they had lined up. It's going according to script. Moreau went five innings, gave up three runs, only two of them earned. But the Georgia Bats have failed to live up to their part of the bargain. And now I'm not sure what the delay is. The home plate umpire David Wiley is going to go out to the mound to talk to Weaver. Something about Weaver's warm-up delivery, I thought. Yeah, the count's one and zero oh now. And I don't know what they are talking about. I'm sure Aaron Andrews will find out for us down there in the dugout. There's Larry Weaver, his dad. It's quite odd. 1 0 to Hedstrom, who's leading off the sixth inning. Chopped wide of third. Pizel ranges over there and throws him out. Pizel's played a really good third base during this College World Series. Also hit well and shown his leadership skills the entire time, as he has all year long. This is the team that was 23 and 33 last year, the Georgia Bulldogs. They would be the first team ever to win a college world championship. Bunted right back to the mound. Easy play for Weaver. And have a losing record the year before. So we're going to make history one way or another tonight because Fresno State, the lowest seeded team ever to reach a championship round of any sport in the NCAA. And there is Georgia's record a year ago, 23 and 33. They were unranked this year. They have already lost 24 games. If they win, that's the most losses ever for a College World Series champion. Fresno State has done them even better. They've lost 31. It would be their second College World Series title. And as Oral just told you, no one has ever won the College World Series coming huh. off of a losing record. Weaver trying to retire Susdorf, who has reached twice tonight. Breaking ball hangs outside. Justin Wilson getting a blow there on the bench. Boy, is he on his game. I'm not sure he's going to need too many more runs. Doesn't look like it, does it? One Although I'm sure he wouldn't mind. One of the benefits of winning 19 to 10 yesterday, their closer, Brandon Burke, needed a day off. He pitched in game one, could not get it done. That's who Georgia made their big comeback against. And that was the big surprise that Burke didn't get it done. And they said he was pitching on guts, didn't have his stuff at all. They thought yesterday's day off was huge for yep. him now that he'll be ready for the eighth and ninth. Susdorf drafted last year, came back for his senior year, and he has just been a huge factor in this club's success. Pizel and Beckham give chase on the foul ball. Well, these are two guys that are going to leave everything on the field. They said this means so much to them. They're both draft choices. 
Beckham of course in the top 10 and will sign a huge contract with the White Sox. Pizel also drafted. Three balls two strikes to Susdorf. In the air to left Allen back all the way back to the wall and it's off the wall. Susdorf into second. Allen didn't react like he saw that ball very well. There's got to be a little bit of breeze up above the stadium. That ball was hit very, very high. Didn't seem like it was hit well. But the ball is traveling to the opposite field here tonight. We had a home run to the opposite field by Detweiler. And now this oppo ball. He didn't see it. He didn't see it right very by well. It. He really didn't get a good read on it. Now he was running toward the sun. That could have bothered him. Normally it would not bother the left fielder because he's not running toward the line in that direction. But there is a ribbon of sun there and he was running directly toward it. That could have affected him. But it's a two strike opposite field shot and there you see the angle of the sun very very difficult. Huh. So Weaver's going to have to work his way out of trouble. And back to the earlier point that Kyle brought up about the two strike attitude protect the plate take shorter swings that was a ball away two strike attitude hit it to the opposite field for a double it was Amadi's chance to tie for the league NCAA lead for the year in RBIs a little high for a ball he is one behind Buster Posey he has driven in 92 this year fly out in a strikeout in his first two trips. Amadi only a sophomore. He already has the team single season record. Oh. And that one is fouled off his foot. So Amadi will be one of the cornerstone players of guys coming back next year. But this team is about the juniors and the seniors. It always is when you get out here. Two balls, two strikes to Alan Amati. He's a homegrown product from Fresno in the San Joaquin Valley. Outside. So you get Detweiler on deck with a I'm home run and say, a double. Being careful with the Mahdi, but you better look and see who's there. Last time they chose to pitch to him and he hurt him. Well, these two hits were off left handers. That one's high for a ball. Amadi with a base on balls, runners at first and second. And here is Detweiler, the first time up. Two run homer that barely got out of here to right field. And then in a situation with a base open, he crushed it to left center. A stand up double. So Detweiler is two for two. Torn ligament in his thumb and all. It's not a partial tear. This thing is fully torn. It needs to be reattached. Not only reattached, they're going to do a ligament. They're going to go get one and put it in like he's having a Tommy John surgery for his thumb. Detweiler in the finals. Six for 11, two home runs, six driven in, and he scored five. Can't get a better line than that. Fastball, snap Seven. throw down to first, not in time as Amadi got back. But Joey Lewis has already shown that he can throw. He threw out headstrong early in the game, trying to steal second. Made a bad throw to second, overthrew on another time, but he has an arm and he likes to show it off. Two balls, no strikes to Detweiler. Fresno State already up 3 0. Ha! Fastball is in there.
really good strike zone I think tonight by David Wiley the home plate umpire been very consistent looks like it's just generous enough these umpires are out here because they have earned their way to Omaha just like the teams have that one's high Dean Weaver has been a workhorse for the Georgia Bulldogs. He has been, but not broken. He has pitched in games where it's been a blowout and eaten up innings. That's what's affected his ERA. But in these key situations for big outs, he has come through through this College World Series. Detweiler ahead in the count, three and one. Two men out, two men on. In the Fresno State sixth inning. Hit to deep left. That thing is out of here. A three-run shot. High fastball again. This one he takes to left. It was a high fastball. He took the opposite way in his first at bat. He took another fastball, hitting the gap for a double. And look at the bench react to his third hit. He's driven in all six RBIs. Shift game records in this game. Most home runs with two. Most extra base hits with three. He also had a double. Most RBIs with six. Most total bases with ten. One great player after another has come through Omaha and played in the championship series, played in this series, and Steve Detweiler has rewritten the record books for this game. Congratulations to him. He is a gamer. I bet the thumb doesn't even hurt right now. Well, you dream about playing in a game like this as a little kid. You play wiffle ball. You play against your garage with your friends with a tennis ball. You play out in the street. You play stick ball. And you dream about having that kind of day, but you don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> Poitras fly ball to center field. Headstrom is back and makes the catch. Steve Detweiler is going to want to have a videotape of this. First time up. Two run home run that barely got out of here. Next time up with a base open, they chose to pitch to him and he racked it off the wall. Third time up, this is the best one of all. He got all of that one, didn't he? And a screaming line drive, 20 rows back. Here's a long fly ball to right center, but not long enough. Headstrom again will make the catch. Massoneri is gone. All he's done in the final, seven out of 12, three home runs, nine driven in. He also ran into the wall and right center made a circus catch. A catch where he jammed his ligamentless thumb into the wall and also smashed his face into the padding for good measure. Well, when we first introduced him in his first at bat, we talked about the thumb and we talked about how it hurt the most when he swings and misses. And what did he do right then? He swung and missed and had to take a moment to get the feeling back or have the pain subside. And then he steps up at the next in, during that at bat in the next two and goes home run, double home run. He has found the solution. Don't swing and miss. <laughs> Just hit <laughs> screaming line drives wherever he can. When there's a problem, look out. Ball went one way, the bat went the other. And they're showing white flags for Cerrone. That'll get your attention. Yeah, a little bit extension, and then all of a sudden the bat slips out. We've had a lot of rain here in the last day or so. It's a very humid night, the hottest and most humid night we've had here in the last two weeks. 0-2 to Cerrone, lefty against lefty. Justin Wilson has been sensational. That one stays high. 
One ball and two strikes. Cerrone with a single and a strikeout and two trips. And Georgia has just been flat shut down by Wilson. Well, they always say good pitching the Georgia defeats lineup. good hitting. It's worked tonight. <laughs> That's the next pitch. After the bat went into the dugout. As the pitch is in the air. Get down. The bat might be coming over here. There's nothing like baseball humor. Nothing like it at all. Baseball players are the funniest people on earth and the cruelest. <laughs> the cruelest for sure. Yeah. That's what makes it so funny. Ah! Popped up foul territory. Mendoza. Well, I'd like to see Mendoza have a shot at that. If that was anywhere in the field of play, he gets it. Kid is just lights out at third base. Yeah, he'll remind you of a, a Tim Wallach or a Robin Ventura, a George Brett. Very Rolling. scrappy down there. I think the ultimate still Brooks Robbins. Best I ever saw. Up and in. It's officially chin music. Three balls and two strikes to Matt Cerrone. This will be the 100th pitch from Justin Wilson. Chopped Mendoza. Nice. Jordan Ribeiro will come on as the pinch hitter for Jake Johnson. Ribeiro had been the DH earlier in the season and fouls this one off. Unusual to have a DH, either Johnson or Rivera, hitting under 230, but that's what they have had this year. And Rivera has hit really well out here. Six for 16, a 375 World Series average, which raised him above the Mendoza line for the season. Not the Mendoza line, <laughs> the Mendoza line which is a 200 batting average. Ribera grub scheduled next and then back to the top of the order for Fresno State and Ribera puts a charge into it but right at Olsen in right field. We had asked you on ESPN.com who you thought would win tonight Georgia had to be the favorite and you voted 69.4 percent to 30.6 percent not unexpected but out in Fresno in the San Joaquin Valley they had those 30 percent they have seen this all year long a team that started eight and twelve had to win its conference tournament just to be considered to get in. They were not going to make it to the NCAA tournament. They get the automatic bid by winning that. Then they go to Long Beach State. Just a horrific place to try to win. That's for the regional where they had to beat Long Beach State and San Diego, two highly ranked teams. And then on to Arizona State, a team that was 39 and three at home they're hosting the Super Regional, and they beat them two out of three just to get here. And then they had to face some of the best teams in the country, Rice, North Carolina, and Georgia. And now they are three innings away from walking out of here with a national championship trophy. Ha! That's quite a story. It'll be the number one underdog story of all college sports if you go by just seedings and what they've accomplished. Number four in their region, and then to win it all. And they were only number four in the region because there's only four teams in the region. 102nd in offense coming into this College World Series, 60th in pitching. Well, if they win, they get the crown, they get to keep the carriage and the two footman and the prince. Well. 
they get it all and they lost game one of the best of three and are looking like they've got a major shot at winning two in a row now Danny Grubb has flown out twice to right and to center Weaver here in the seventh Balls hit hard to left. Allen ranges to his right and makes the catch. Two gone. You can keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series information by logging on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Two out, nobody on here in the Fresno State seventh. And Muno will stand in, the leadoff hitter. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Ha! The WAC freshman of the year. Guy who works the count very, very well. And yeah, we were on the other side of the bracket, so we didn't get to know Fresno State here until the finals. But it was interesting when Mike Batesel tried to describe his team to us and the way they went about. He said they love to play. And watch them when they come out for batting practice. We're going to look like a bunch of seventh graders going out for recess. <laughs> He says, you can't take these guys anywhere. They just love to play. They love to take BP. They love to take game. ground balls. They love to run into things. They'll find a tarp, a wall, or something to get dirty with and run into. The and they are cut of the same cloth as their head coach. Well, somebody said when we came out here, uh, Fresno State has 25 little Mike Batesels on the roster. Yeah. The Heat played hard as a pro, and he is teaching hardball here Fresno State that thing is smoked to dead center field Muno with a base hit and they have shown they really know how to stroke it Muno at first with two outs and Edstrom will have a chance to add to this total if you're Georgia right now you have to Get past the disappointment of what has already happened to you and realize you have three at bats left. You've got great players, great hitters, and you've got a chance to come back. And you can't let the fact that since they led 5 0 last night, they have been outscored 25 to 5. You know, wipe, you find a way to wipe it out of your mind and get on with it because you still have a chance at a national title. You do, and you've got nine outs. Nice bunt by Hedstrom. And they still got it. But trust me on this one, Fresno State would be the lowest seeded team of any sport in the NCAA ever to win a national championship. Ever. And ever is a long time. And only their second national championship of the school history. Was the other one 1998? Was it a Ladies softball. softball team. Correct. Joey Lewis will lead it off in the seventh. Justin Wilson working on a shutout. That was his hundred and second pitch of the ball game. The third time in the NCAA tournament he has gone over a hundred pitches and he has just been sensational. Georgia has not been shut out this year. Deep left center. Cerrone now with a feed on it, back on the track and makes the catch. Excuse me, Hedstrom. And there's one out. And here are the lower seeded teams. In each sport, Oregon State, 2007, a regional three seed. Basketball, we already told you about Villanova. The Rockets were a six seed in the West. When they won the NBA in 95, the Devils, a five seed in the East, and the Steelers in 2005, the way they seed in the NFL, they were a six seed, a wild card team. This one fisted by Allen, and he's out. Two quickly gone here in the Georgia eighth inning to make it the seventh. Well, two quickly gone and ten in a row for Justin Wilson the Georgia Bulldogs and Dave Perno over there Gordon Beckham to his right looking for a spark. They haven't had many today. Well when you expect or hope that a guy's going to go five innings. 
And here he is in the seventh, pitching a 6 nothing shutout. You have found lightning in a bottle. Hit to short and right through Muno. Three errors for the freshman shortstop in this game, but lo and behold, it has not hurt the team one bit. They have been so fortunate. Got to make that play. Uh, Dustin Lewis, what a great reaction from the mound to relieve some of the pressure of three error night. It hasn't hurt his team at all, but just a little bit of flinch. Keep the tailgate down, but hey, big boy, let's go. It's all right, man. It's all right, let's go. That's that's a great reaction. It's a very generous reaction. <laughs> that's wonderful. How were you on plays like that? Were you as generous? As, you know, kind of, yeah, let's go, stay, hang in there, we'll get them, and then turn away quick so they couldn't see the real expression. <laughs> This <laughs> will go to the backstop and send Miles Starr down to second base. You know, if you'd have booted the ball, I'd be like, come on, that's all right, we can get him. And then I'd quick turn away and start rubbing up the ball over here. I didn't want to show you the real emotion. If I was playing shortstop, you'd have had to tell me so many times. They'd have to hit you, it right at you, too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> ball always finds you, remember? <laughs> Found me. And Muno was having a game he would rather forget but the bottom line is it hasn't cost his team those are easily forgettable the mistakes you make that cost you a ball game those are the ones that live with you a long time that's ball four, that's ball four. so Pizel draws a base on balls Olsen coming up that is the first walk issued by Wilson tonight Let's check in with Aaron. Mike Oral mentioned that this Georgia dugout just waiting for a spark. They've been pretty quiet and very tense throughout these past couple innings. And every time they get a guy on base, you can sense they're trying to perk up. Dave Perno walked by me a couple innings and go and just said to me, we need that one home run. Well, they can get Gordon Beckham up. Remember, he promised them in game one, when you need it, I'll be big time. They need that pretty soon. <laughs> Well, Aaron, they've got to get him up, and this is the time to do it, and it's up to Olsen to keep the inning alive. Olsen, uh, the left-hander against the left-hander, is 0 for 3 in this game, and no left-hander has had quality swings at Wilson. But he's got to find a way to get on to get Beckham up in this situation where he's got an at-bat and a chance to drive in multiple runs instead of if Olsen makes an out, Beckham comes up in the eighth to lead off the inning. I want Beckham up with about eight guys on. Well, I've got to have Olsen hit like he's a leadoff hitter right here. Even though it's a chance to drive in a run, you want to get Beckham up there with the bases loaded, make him throw strikes. Olsen is only three for 27 huh. out here. He's hitting 111 in the College World Series. And now's the time he's got to come through. 111 pitches for Wilson. Anything left in the tank? Foul back. One ball, two strikes. There is Clayton Allison, who came back from shoulder tendonitis to get a start here in the College World Series and gave him an outstanding performance. He's obviously not ready, throwing very softly down there. That's low. Two and two to Olsen. Biggest situation of his career. He is a 6-1 senior from LaGrange, Georgia. Shallow center. Hedstrom is there. They strand two more. The lowest seeded team ever to make a championship round. They would be obviously the lowest seeded team ever to win a championship in any NCAA sport. And Dean Weaver starts Wetzel off with a fastball out of the zone. Wetzel 0 for 3. As Fresno State bats in the eighth inning, time getting short for Georgia. Well, they're batting in the eighth inning, but the concerns are about their pitcher. Is Justin Wilson going to continue? And if he can't, 
who will be the reliever. Clayton Allison is throwing in the bullpen. He was the starter against North Carolina in their elimination game. He hadn't picked up a ball for two weeks because he had shoulder tendonitis. Two hops to the second baseman. He played catch before the game against North Carolina, and they said, yes, I can go. He ended up going six innings, throwing 90 pitches, six hits, and a run, and got the W in the elimination game. He went down with two days off now, and Mike Batesel wants to know, how does the arm feel? He went down and played catch a little bit. That's Mike Main, their pitching coach. Mike Batesel has been so sensitive to this staff. It's yes, been running on fumes. He doesn't want to hurt anyone. And he has face-to-face -face conversations with his pitchers because they all are begging for the ball. That one hit him. And he talks, he talks to his pitchers, and he says, you know, you 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 got to be honest with me. You know, you got to tell me how it feels. Don't give me the uh, you know the rah rah stuff about I can gut it out. And Kyle, that's uh, that's what you have to do. You have to count on your kids to tell you the truth. Yeah, you absolutely do. And he came in after that th that last, and he looked at Justin Wilson and said, uh, thinking about taking you out. He looked him dead in the eye and said, No, you're not. But I'm not coming out of the game right now. When he walked down and asked Clayton Allison, Allison said, I feel fine. So they need to go to him. They think they can. But at this point, it's Wilson's ballgame. Thrown 115 pitches tonight. He has gone 135 in his career, 123 this season. So he is no stranger to that. But that's an unusually high pitch count, especially these days. In previous times, you did not have pitch counts. You know, throw it. Yep. It kept going and going and going. The pitch has become more strenuous, I think, because the hitters have gotten stronger. The strike zone has gotten smaller. And so Shot over the years, third, I think that the effort in each pitch has gotten harder because it has to be more precise. It has to be manipulated a little bit more to make it break. And with the high strike not being called as much, and you, then you can't get somebody to chase that high strike, that is probably the easiest pitch to throw on your body, is to throw a high fastball. You know, when a pitcher gets tired, what can he throw? He can throw high fastballs. True. So it's, a, it's an easy pitch. But nowadays, when you get to 100 pitches, that is kind of the line of demarcation, and it also is kind of the cover the coaching staff's rear end type of line. When I get him to 100, I get him out, because anything right. after that, I'm really, you know, starting to risk my pitcher's health. But if somebody looks you in the eye and says, you're not taking me out of this game, it's awful hard to take him out. Fastball right back to the mound. Chance for a double play, but a low throw. And then on to first, not in time. The bobble was one thing. The low throw from Weaver probably sensed it, the fact that they were not going to double up Susdorf, who runs pretty well anyway. Let's go to Kyle Peterson. Kyle? Fellas, for as good as Detweiler's been in this championship series, he really struggled getting up to this point. In the first four games before the championship series, Detweiler was two for 17, two RBIs and six strikeouts. We see the numbers that he's had so far in these finals. But just three games ago, we met with Mike Basil before the game. He looked at us and said, I don't know if I can keep playing him. I don't know what's hurting him. Not swinging the bat very well. Well, he's swinging it all right now. He's got a base hit to right, another one. Detweiler just continues to starts the ball. Thumbs, who needs stinking thumbs? Well, another high pitch. He's proved he can hit the high one. It's a high breaking ball. He stays on and hits the opposite field. A nice play out in right field after this line drive falls in by Matt Olson. He does a good job short hopping that ball and not allowing that seventh Fresno State Bulldog run in. And what a day for that young man. Four for four, six RBIs, two home runs, a double and a single. Let's go back to Kyle. Yeah, guys, and when Mike Batesel sat and looked at us, he said, but I can't take the kid out for everything he's done this year to fight through that injury, to be there at the times that we really needed him. In my mind, there's no way that I can possibly take him out in this time and he looked at us and said you know what I just get the feeling he's going to do something big the key with this two guys with the left handed pitcher on the mound tonight for Georgia Detweiler moved up a spot moved into the spot that Mendonca had occupied in his batting order and he's been unbelievable in that six hole boy hasn't he ever he's been lights out 
and we've got a pitching change alex mccree will be coming on for the georgia bulldogs here in the eighth well mccree's outstanding against lefty and mendonza struggles against left-handers with this first and third situation look to see if the george the fresno state bulldogs might try and steal a run maybe with a double steal to get a two strike situation or even earlier breaking ball chased it that sounds like a little birdie has been on your shoulder uh, just looking at a, a left on left struggling watching Mike Bates will talk to his runners during the pitching change well if they're going to do it now's the time you've got Sesdorf at third Detweiler at first there goes Detweiler and that ball is hit to deep right but it holds up and Olsen will make the catch from the potential stars of the NBA draft to the stars of the Major League Baseball amateur draft in a six nothing game and Gordon Beckham will lead it off for Georgia he was the eighth overall pick by the Chicago White Sox and for the fourth time tonight he is coming up with the bases empty Fresno State has done a great job in that department. You want him to hit with men on and he hasn't had a chance to and he's just going to work the count here as a leadoff hitter. But what a college career he's had as he goes off to be a Chicago White Sox if this is his last college game and it will be. Deep left. This could tie for the national lead and home runs and it does number 28. It's as if to say, all right, we can't get anybody on. I'll do it myself. What a terrific college player. What a terrific career this kid has had. There goes the shutout. His 28th bomb of the year. Well, it hasn't been all rosy in his college career either. His last at bat in 06 as a freshman, he grounded into a double play. Dave Perno, the head coach, ran right to him and said, kid, you're going to lead us back here. Don't be too ah. depressed. And he has followed through on his potential and his coach's prediction. 28 home runs this season has tied Matt Clark for the NCAA lead. And it's always tough to predict success at the next level. But I tell you what, he's got a shot at being a terrific player. Well, what terrific. a big out Justin Wilson got when he got Matt Olson out prior to Beckham the inning before, because that would have been a grand slam. This one's fisted. And right into the glove of Amati. Wilson working an eighth where he had a shutout, just gave it up to Beckham. How much longer do you think he goes? Well, guts and determination. One of the factors was the fact that he had a shutout going. The only blemish comes from an All American hitting his home run. As long as he's throwing strikes and he wants to be out there, I think Mike Batesel will go with him. Brandon Burke, their closer, is rested. I think the eighth will probably be it. He's gone as high as 135 pitches here at the College World Series. Massoneri takes that one in the dirt. If he can get through this inning under that 135 mark. Reminds me of the days when David Cohn would just go forever with the Mets and the Yankees. Allison still warming and Burke is ready they're closer this one popped up by Massonary shallow center anybody going to call for it they do Hedstrom finally got there and Massonary down for the second out of the inning well if you're a Georgia fan you were obviously hoping that that home run would spark some other base hits it is not yet Is he going to be a shortstop in the pros, or will they move him? Well, we'll see as the body fills out and he gets stronger. He's got a big frame. He could end up gaining about 20 pounds, maybe moving over and being a Jeff Kent-type second baseman. He might get the move over to third, or if he can keep his quickness, stay it short.
Cerrone. One for three tonight. That one just missed. Well, we have our headsets on. We asked the Georgia kids this morning, who do they think the crowd is rooting for? Because they're down there on the field, and they, could, they think the Omaha crowd is behind this Cinderella story of Fresno State. They said, did you hear when they scored their first run yesterday in the comeback when we had them up five to nothing? They that, were loud. That happens. Neutral crowds will go for the underdog every time. Defensive swing fouled back to the screen. Yeah, we asked our ESPN.com crowd, the 44,000 that voted, who they think was going to win. We didn't ask them who are they rooting for to win. Good point. Two and two, two out in the eighth. Okay. Strike three, call. One thumb. He will have surgery when the season is over. They will have to take a ligament out of his arm and reattach the ligament in his left thumb. Nick Hom comes on as a pinch hitter for Rivera. Fouls that one back into the seats like a bullet with a late swing. One and one from Alex McCree. Hom, a freshman from Benicia. And his brother plays at UC San Diego. So much talent on the West Coast and so many really good teams out there. One and one is low. Two balls and a strike. Well, even with a chance to win the College World Series, Mike Batesel is getting a freshman in at bat. He has not appeared in the College World Series. I like this. Maybe he should have. Rips a single to center. So Nick Hom. Gets a base hit to start the ninth. Was baseball in the NCAA dominated by teams from the south and the west? Because of the weather, they get the early starts, but that rule has been changed. They're equalizing the opportunities for the teams in the north. They still have the problem, however. They are in the north. And it's pretty tough if you are a big-time college baseball player to go there. Soares is in as a pinch runner for Hom. Seen him in this situation before. And Danny Grubb is the hitter. Now you did. Tries to bunt. Fresno goes on to win this. They will be the seventh team in a row to win a national title west of the Mississippi. The west Coast. Left coast. You sense a trend. So many teams out here from uh, the Atlantic Coast Conference in recent years, they've had no success once they get here. And while we have the chance, I want to thank Scott Matthews, our producer, Scott Johnson, our director, for the tremendous job they've done. Mark Amento has been spotless with our statistics up here in the booth. Dave Dare, our stage manager, Aaron Andrews, and Kyle Peterson who have foul, foul, right worked here. the dugouts for us and the best crew in the world people who have come out here and just worked their hearts out while we have been staying in one bracket and doing one game every day these men and women have been doing double headers now we get down to single games they get to do those too uh, just tremendously talented people who are very dedicated to their craft and we can't thank them enough and a lot of them don't leave here and go home to their Don't families. They go on to the next event. We get a couple days off. I've got Monday night baseball coming up. I'm going home. You're going to go <laughs> home? I get to go home for about three days and then turn around and go do Monday night. Maybe some of this crew will follow me there. Runner goes. Throw will short hop into second base and he's safe. It's Beckham unable to hold the ball on the low throw. Well, this game is not so far out of reach that the stolen base is like unauthorized or uncultural. Joey Lewis makes a nice low throw. Just Beckham has a tough time keeping it in his glove, getting the bang bang tag. Take a look, hits the glove, but the slide takes it out. Good hard slide by Nick Hom. 
Soares, who was the pinch runner. This one's chopped to the other side. It will get the run of the third with less than two outs. Grubb does a nice job giving himself up to advance the runner. So Soares able to go to third. And Muno will have an opportunity to drive someone in against Alex McCree. If you're a basketball fan, you are so familiar with RPIs. That's discussed about uh, bubble teams and where they rank in the RPI. We'll look at all these numbers, the teams that were 20 and under in the pre-tournament RPI rankings, and there is Fresno State at number 89. And the 89th ranked team with an RPI was not gotten the first round of the NIT tournament. <laughs> That's how far down 89 goes. And they are on the verge of an absolute miracle here. Ha! Strike called. Well, Mike Batesell is the heart and soul of these kids. He recruited kids that play like him, act like him, fight like him. They don't give away at bats, they don't give away pitches. They don't care what the label on the chest of the opposing team says. They don't care if they're down five runs. They don't care if they're an elimination game. They just care about getting it done. You saw Muno square around. That was not a squeeze because the runner was not breaking. Could have been a safety squeeze or Muno could have been doing something on his own. Usually you're not doing it on and on because you don't want to surprise that guy down at third. What you're trying to do is bunt the ball to third base. The runner on third follows the third baseman in as he goes to field the ball. If he never turns around and checks you, you then follow him right on home. The way to defense it is to swing your shortstop around as that bunt is bunted to third and he comes in behind the runner and he can't follow him as foul. Two and two to Danny Muno. Strike called. Inside corner on a breaking ball and Muno was gone here in the ninth. Well, the saving grace for Danny Muno today. He got one little base hit but those three errors are going to haunt him a little bit but as a freshman with this program with a chance to win a national title he's going to be telling a lot of stories about this game. Yes good he ones. will. And just gotten shellacked. It's a lack of concentration, I think. They put him in games where he had to get some work to keep him ready. And closers usually don't like that. Number one draft pick by the Seattle Mariners. 95 to 98 miles an hour, Gavin Hedstrom will have to hit. And an 82 mile an hour hammer, 12 to 6 bite on the curveball. This young man could be the fastest out of this draft to get to the big leagues. Well, he gets some oohs and ahs on the first pitch every time. And he just got some filthy stuff. And while you're trying to catch up to that fastball and he throws a hook. Hi. Drafted that you by couldn't the hit with a raft. Drafted by the Braves in his junior year. Turned that down. Came back for his senior year. And has had a marvelous senior year. Not exactly what you'd call a perfect swing at that one. Or once you get the ball above 93 miles an hour, the reaction time for the hitter is cut down, and you start to see a lot of swings that are unorthodox and hey. pitches that are definitely balls out of pitchers' hands because the hitters start to get an anxiety in them, thinking they can't catch up, and they start too early before they even read ball or strike. If he decides to go to the equalizer, this could be fun to watch. This has been the situation where he has usually thrown it when he comes right out of the bull. Instead, it's a fastball. Rolled to second base. Miles Starr will throw him out. So Fields gets in a third of an inning. But we will go now to the bottom of the ninth. Georgia with a last chance. They are down by five runs. And the anxiety is written all over these guys' faces.
best of three format Oregon State in 2006 the only team to lose the first game and come back to win the series. Augie Garrido with going all the way back to his connection with Fresno State as a graduate. Augie showed up a few nights ago just wants to maintain the connection with this program played in the College World Series in 1959 one of our favorite people guy who just loves college baseball and now the very successful head coach at Texas and Clayton Allison will come on to pitch Justin Wilson gets a tremendous ovation and hugs from his teammates as he leaves after eight brilliant innings. Clayton Allison, what a magnificent story of heart and dedication to want to get back on the mound. Pitched in an elimination game against North Carolina, had not been on a mound for two weeks. All he could do was play catch before the game and told Mike Batesel, I think I can go. They said, go ahead and try and warm up. He ended up going six innings, giving up one run, three walks, six Ks through 90 pitches. And now two days later, following Justin Wilson's magnificent outing, he comes into relief to try and close this down for the Fresno State Bulldogs. That's the line on Wilson. Eight innings, one run. He was in control the entire time. Perhaps the only mistake he made was the pitch that he threw to Gordon Beckham that Beckham hit out for a home run. But he did it when Beckham was leading off an inning and Beckham unable to be in a situation through none of his own fault of coming up with nobody on base the entire game the table setters did not do the job and get on in front of their all American who has just been lights out not only all season but in the NCAA tournament and here in Omaha he has been truly a bright shining star. They'll see Lewis Allen and Miles star are the scheduled hitters. They keep it alive. We would go back to the top of the order. Beckham is the sixth man scheduled to hit. They've got to get to him to have a chance. That almost hit him from Clayton Allison, the senior from Visalia, California. Burke will be ready. You can count on that if he's needed. Their closer. Allison line drive and it drops and it gets through. Will roll all the way the wall. First mistake Detweiler has made since he's gotten to Omaha. High fastball stays on it, hits it out there. Detweiler makes a nice effort, but gets in between. The ball takes a hop over his head. He expected to kind of skip low. Tried to knock it down with his bare hand. As long as it's a base runner, it doesn't matter if it's one or two bases. That run doesn't matter much. Try and dive, do anything you can to get outs if you're Fresno State until all of a sudden the batter runner matters. Robbie O'Brien comes on to pinch it. He is one for five here in Omaha, hitting 215 for the season. If Georgia can get a rally from Clayton Allison. Brandon Burke is the pitcher they got four runs off of in game one to come from behind with. So they have a lot of confidence if Brandon Burke comes into the game, and Burke will have to conquer the ghosts of game one. That ball was high. And Burke is ready. Had the rest yesterday. And Allison obviously not sharp right now. When you've had tenderness in your shoulder, you have a tendency to want to let the ball go early, get the weight out of your hand so you can decelerate your arm, give your arm more time to stop. So you want to release the ball, and the ball ends up high and away. Three balls and no strikes. Strike called inside corner three and one to Robbie O'Brien redshirt freshman from Marietta Georgia. I would bet he's taking right here. Any way to get on that's what they need and he draws a free pass. 
So Robbie O'Brien as the pinch hitter comes through with a walk first and second. Told you earlier Georgia will not go quietly. And that's going to be it. For Clayton Allison. I think Mike Batesel wanted to have his senior finish this thing off. But he gave up a base hit in the walk. 13 saves this year, making his 38th appearance. The only runs he's given up here at the College World Series are against this Georgia team. David oh, Tom oh, oh, taps oh. it foul. The reason I mentioned at the start of the inning that Gordon Beckham would hit sixth. If you're a Georgia fan, project this. The first five guys get on. Beckham comes up. He represents the winning run. All you have to do is get to him, he said. Burke has other ideas. Just missed. And he asked the home plate umpire, was that outside? Fuller is the pinch runner for Robbie O'Brien. Hit towards short. There's one Wetzel on the first double play. And the freshman, Danny Muno, who has struggled the entire game with three errors, wasn't going to struggle with that when he got a double play out of it. And boy, you better believe he feels better. He gets to go to his left. He can field it on the forehand side tonight. Three errors, but now he starts a key, key double play. To take the air out of the sails of the Georgia Bulldogs. Boy, that did almost all of it. Georgia 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. And that curveball just high to Ryan Pizel. Joey Lewis goes to third. Fresno State could care less about the runner. Now that they have two out, they're just trying to get one more on under any circumstance. Two balls and one strike from Burke to Ryan Pizel. Bottom of the ninth in a national championship game. Ball 2 2. Georgia down to its last out. Fresno State has never won a national championship in a men's sport. Women's softball in 1998, the only championship the school has ever won. Oh, and look at Burke's reaction. He wanted that one, but it looked low. Don't get carried away, young man. You've got still a job to do. Sinking fastball that just sinks enough. If you want it so bad, you visualize a strike, the umpire's got a better view. Three and two to Pizel. George is still alive. That one hangs inside. Bulldogs are not quiet creatures. And these Georgia Bulldogs will not go quietly. Projecting the lineup out now, the, the winning run is Bryce Massoneri. The tying run would be, be Rich Poitras, but you still have to get two batters up to get there. Here is Olsen. He has been dominated by lefties for most of the night, now facing a right-hander in this situation. Line to right. Detweiler has got it. Cinderella wins a national championship.